Hello Reformers and welcome to a special feature of Starpoint Gemini Warlords and the new expansion Titans Return. Now this video is kindly sponsored by the developers and if you'd like to check out the DLC then the link is in the description. Now, if you just happened to catch the Deadly Dozen video that I made on the other DLC, then you would have noticed that this is a very different ship than what we had beforehand. Now, here's the thing. When you get this DLC, you can have a quick start, and that quick start can enable you to start at level 30, and you have all the skill points and things associated with that. You can choose a ship from a variety of different designs, and then you can start playing the Titans storyline if you so desire. Obviously, this is technically meant to have been played when you completed the original campaign, and obviously I haven't done that, you know, you've seen my level, I was about level 15, you need to be about, I think, level 25, 30 by the time you complete the campaign, so there is a huge amount of content here. Anyway, I think it is about time that we begin, and I'm going to be going to the shipyard station, and what we are currently piloting is a Dreadnought. Yes, an actual Dreadnought, it is absolutely insane the amount of damage we're able to do. Okay, so now, if I could just... If I could just get in here, that would be fantastic. There we go. Yeah, that's that's the way we want it. Autopilot, thank you very much. And yes, I'm also playing my same class. I'm playing the Marauder class. And there's a variety of different classes you can pick from. You can pick from the Sharpshooter or the Vanguard with the Quick Start as well, if you so desire. Otherwise, you can just take on your previous character into the new DLC, which introduces some incredibly large and very impressive ships. Sir, incoming signal from the star point. Uh, okay, so, oh yes, we have a bit of a problem here. Now, the star point is a huge sort of warp gate type thing, and, uh, well, you'll see it very, very soon. Armada, uh, requesting assistance, uh, yes, apparently. What could that be, says James Teacup, ah, yes, unknown signature, so we can't be sure. We should approach the star point with extreme caution. Okay, so yes, that's what we have to do to begin the story, and we're now going to head down here. Now, I'm not going to be, you know, taking you through every single step of the way here. There are a number of things that I've done in the future, and I basically have another save, and I'm going to be loading that up once we have experienced most of the story in the sort of introduction here, so you get to see a bit more of the advanced gameplay stages. Anyway, let's go to the main mission. Engage sublight. And there it is, the star point itself. As you can see, it's an absolutely huge warp gate type thing. It is just crazy, and there's going to be something relatively large coming through there. And by relatively large, I mean absolutely massive. It is going to be pretty crazy. And when you see it, don't worry, because, well, there actually, there's actually going to be numerous of them. So, yes, this is going to be, it's going to be pretty fun. Anyway, here's the waypoint, and we're going to start the next stage of the main mission. Now, this is just one of many different types of ships that you can select, or indeed that you can buy, and this is the Dreadnought class. And there's a, wow, there's just so many different choices, and that obviously affects your firing angles and all that sort of thing. Anyway, we are at the start point. The crew is ready for transport to investigate the source. All right, so I have to select the start point, and then we're just going to be transporting a bunch of people on there and finding out what's going on. Sir, it is definitely an old Nixian signature. Concord Commander, what kind of insolence is this? Do you have any idea what you are doing and who you are scheming with? Our crew right now is investigating the star point signal. We have... Investigating? Sir, they've just opened the subspace channel. We are detecting multiple Nixian Dominion loyalist signatures along the star point. Sir, something is happening. There's many sirs, apparently. The star point is reacting. Pull our crew back. Concord, you are in violation of the Core Worlds Agreement. Any cooperation with the Nixian Dominion will result in immediate termination of the Violator. Which is... us. But we didn't even... Sir, they've cut the comms and are rushing in to attack. Battle stations. Okay, so here we go. Here's the first fight of the new DLC, and we're going to marvel at my amazing rail guns and plasma cannons because in my previous video of the Deadly Dozen DLC, didn't really have many of these. I was using beam weapons, which I gotta say, 
probably not the best choice because you can spec into some really, really impressive upgrades with the plasma cannons and more specifically the rail guns because you get an incredible increase in critical chance and it's just really, really fantastic. Anyway, we also have some heavy weapons here as well. I think we have... I think they are fusion torpedoes and things like that, so I'm going to be using some of those as well. But as you can see, we are absolutely destroying these battleships right here. Unfortunately, we do have to take care of a carrier. And these carriers, they're pretty they are pretty difficult to take on. They are pretty difficult. So we're going to have to take our time over this and see what we can do. But I'm going to continue using my ability. Expose is fully maximized as well. So it's doing a huge amount of damage and giving us massive amounts of damage amplification. So... Yeah, we're, we're doing a lot of damage right there, especially when we use our fusion torpedo. Now, unfortunately, we are also blessed with the presence of enemy dreadnoughts. And enemy dreadnoughts, well, you can kind of tell from them being extremely impressive that they are going to take a huge amount of time to destroy. But that is only because they are very, very deadly if you allow them to live. Now, we've already eliminated the carrier. Thankfully, you only have to get that to 50% HP because I do, I do believe it's actually a story important, you know, NPC or whatever it may be, but yes, yeah, it's, it's just kind of unfortunate that they're not the Dreadnoughts, you know, because otherwise we would only have to get those to 50%, but never mind. Oh, I'm going to use my executability. Yes, there we go. My executability is fantastic. Basically, it can kill anything. As far as I've encountered so far, it can kill anything from about 25% HP and maybe a little bit more dependent on if you use Expose beforehand. It ignores, as far as I'm aware, it does ignore shields and all that sort of thing, so it's pretty crazy. And if you do get the killing blow with it, then it, well, it just has an extremely reduced cooldown, which is fantastic. It has about a, what is it now, 13 second cooldown? That's just insane. So it's really, really nice. But you do obviously have to get the killing blow, so that does make a bit of a difference. And I have spoken about this beforehand, but I just thought I'd reiterate upon it, just to make sure that you're familiar with my abilities. Obviously, I do have the cloaking device as well, so if I do come into any opposition that I am a little bit too afraid of, then I can just kind of slink away and recuperate myself somewhat and then see where we go from there but as you can see these dreadnoughts are just melting before us i do have a fleet of my own that has accompanied me and obviously if you are playing this with your own save obviously i'm playing on the quick start at the moment but if you're playing with your own save you're probably going to have a pretty powerful fleet as it is i unfortunately had to deal with the quick start, which is absolutely fine. You know, as you can see, we're doing no problem at all, but I have a feeling that if you were to play with your own personal, you know, own personal battle fleet, you would be in a much, much better position. But anyway, as you can see, we are just about done dealing with the battleship. There we go. Final one down. And now, what do we have to deal with? Oh yes, it's going to be an impressive sight. We've made it. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It is a Titan ship, and the Titan ship is called Defiance. Now, this is only one of, I think, one of three that you can build in the game so that you can pilot yourself. Obviously, I have not yet gotten there, but, you know, who knows? Anyway, as you can see here, Structural Integrity Holdering, we are in one piece, yes. Ah, familiar sight. We are at the right place, Laurel. Behold the grandeur of my system. Could it really be? T Tyrannus, by the caster, you are back. Ah, I see that citizens of Gemini still remember me, but yes, how could you not remember your rightful ruler? Code Omega, rally the Gemini patriots at Nyx. Protect the Harmonizer at all costs. The Starpoint access has to stay closed on their side. Understood, sir. Patriots of Gemini will arrive momentarily. 
Okay, well, yeah. Do you see how big this ship is? I'm going to turn off my auto fire because I really do not want to fire at it. That would be a bad idea. Do you see how massive that ship is? It's pretty crazy. Anyway, a striking re reunion, yes. Not much has changed. They still love me the same. Of course, my liege. Do not mock me, Laurel. Apologies, sir. The Loyalists' report is available. They have gathered at the edge of Nixian territory. We were really lucky to get to that wormhole in time, and that our agents were in place at the Starpoint to open it up. The Starpoint can't change connected destinations without the Harmonizer keeping the path open long enough for our warfleets to pass through. They are holding it secure on the planet Nix, and that's quite a problem. They have severely ramped up their defenses, and we will need to weaken them if we are to proceed with our plan. We will need help, and that's where we come in, yes. Wait, what? Who are you? What is that ship? Oh, yes. Uh, James Teacup, you are sorely, sorely misinformed, apparently. And we have a wee bit of a problem here. The person speaking to you is James Teacup, Warden of the Concord, a remnant of the Empire. They proclaim themselves different from their predecessors, but their actions hint towards their imperialistic nature. However, there's also something I have to tell you about him. Comms shut down. What? What are they saying about us? Who knows? So I suggest we approach the situation with extreme caution. Thank you very much. Noted. This Tyrannus can't be a small deal if the Core Worlds Alliance went running to regroup. Comms restored. Most interesting, Laurel. Commander, I am Zalda Hargraves, an exiled emperor from the first Gemini War. I was, and probably still am, the most influential person to have ever traversed this system. He's modest, isn't he? I had the power to unite Gemini and assimilate the Empire forces, but I was ultimately betrayed by my own kind. And look at them, look where their ploys have brought them, fighting against the Empire for years after my departure, and now they have you against them, an imp in disguise. If I had known, I would perhaps have left them to suffer in their own hell that they've created. Natives of Gemini are star slowly starting to hate you. You are and always will be an outsider. It took them so long to realize that what you truly are can't be changed. We know you did not intend to help us, but Core Worlds Alliance didn't care. Don't you think that they had some deeper ulterior motives than just punishing you for helping my loyalists? They want your life. They want you to stop. Stop taking what is theirs. And they were so surprised when they realized that I was actually back. For real. For real, yo. Yes. <laughs> From their narrow-sighted store side of the story, it was just a plan to get to you. So, Commander, I ask you to join me in an alliance. Yes, to mend the wrongs committed to us. Okay, here we go. So, we can choose. I, I'm, I'm personally wanting to ally with him because, again, huge ship with massive amounts of weapons. I will stand with you, but we have demands. If I was younger, I would have destroyed you on the spot for such boldness. But I understand now that people like you are hard to come by. You can have your territories, traditions, and economy as long as you help me get justice. You can have as much use of me as I can of you. Let us work together. We accept. We will help you. Of course. Huge ship, again. A wise choice, Commander. I look forward to our cooperation. Laurel, explain the details of the operation to the Warden. We have established a base of operations on the border of Nixian territory. We have a lot of support and resources from the Dominion Loyalists, but we lack the firepower that you can provide. Lack, really? Huge ship? Ah, I don't know about that. The Core Worlds Alliance has fortified its position around Nix with upgraded forward outposts. It would be unwise to assault their territories head on, even with the power of our defiance. Ah, well there you go, there's the explanation. What we need to do is conquer and establish the remaining forward outpost that they are working on our starter assault from there by progressively weakening their defenses as we move towards the planet. The political scene will be complex. A lot of Gemini citizens have rallied under the cause to conserve its values. But factions are still wavering about whom to officially support. They of course support Core Hall Elds Alliance from the shadows, but it might be better to conserve relations and allow them their shadow work instead of announcing war against them all. Do not underestimate the power of United Gemini, as this is not the first time they have risen against imperialistic forces. We'll meet you at the location of the outpro outpost. Outpost? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Make sure to bring your fleets, as it won't be an easy task. When we capture the outpost, our troops will fully construct it for you. Oh, that's nice. But afterwards, it will be mostly up to you to wage war. All right. So now we are given a, another set of objectives, and we're going to be you know, going to that. But just, do you see how large that ship is? Yeah, we can get one of those. We can actually get one of those. All right, so now we can go to this waypoint. We're given 500,000 credits. Don't really need the credits right now because I'm currently swimming in money. 70, 75 million I have with this quick start. So, 
off to the waypoint. The waypoint is actually very far up, so I'll see you when we arrive. Alright, so we have arrived at the waypoint. We are at the correct location, Captain. The enemy is restless. We have to hurry up before they have a chance to regroup. There is no time to wait for Dominion forces to help us. In other words, Zalda Hargraves, yes. We're going to have to go in by ourselves and destroy the enemy's ships. So let's try and do that. Now what do they have here? They have battleship. Oh no, they have two dreadnoughts. Oh my. Okay, well that's going to be a bit of a bit of an issue, but I think it should be fine. What we're going to do first is we're, we're going to probably try to target down the battleships because they're pretty easy to eliminate for the most part, but obviously the dreadnoughts are going to take much more of a pounding and we're probably going to try and focus on them last, even though they may have much, much better weapons. But as you can see, look at this battleship. It's just melting before us right now, so that's really nice. Maybe we can use a little bit of that and then there we go killed it very nice okay so who else do we have around here we have another five ships to eliminate okay I guess we're just gonna focus on this guy then yeah look at that fusion torpedo go off there I don't know how much damage it actually does but it looks impressive <laughs> it looks impressive let's shoot it off there we go shoot off a bunch whoa that's actually pretty nice good Yeah, these guys are really, really just melting right here. That's nice. That is really nice. Okay, so can we can we get a little bit more? A little bit more? There we go. Nice. All right. Well, they're actually dying a lot better than they were beforehand when I was doing this in my own time because obviously I wanted to get a little bit more advanced in the story just so, that, you know, I could show a little bit more. But that is, that is pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. They were doing a lot of damage to me beforehand, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just... A little bit more familiar with their systems and things like that but I am I am starting to lose a couple of my shields on the left side there so I do need to be a bit careful I suppose now let's just just move around there there we go and oh yeah look at that look at all of the right batteries just firing away right there look at that that's just crazy damage and I'll tell you you know there are actually a couple of gunships and a couple of frigates and things like that that you will fight a little bit later on and those things they die so so quickly against something like a dreadnought and it is just insanely hilarious to see that but anyway we're gonna take these guys out and then see what happens all right, well, that seems like the last target down. They are coming in great numbers. We need help. Zaldar and his forces should be here any moment now. Well, I very much hope that is indeed the case. But as you can see, we need to survive. That is not good. That is not good at all. Although, the only thing that I'm currently having a couple of difficulties with is, of course, my shield on the right side. But it seems like that has sort of reinitialized itself. We are starting to get a little bit more recuperated along there, but unfortunately now we have to deal with a bunch of dreadnoughts. Yes, even more dreadnoughts, even more battleships and things like that. I can only hope that they are going to arrive soon because otherwise we are going to be outnumbered, outgunned, and things are not going to go well for us. But I have a feeling they're going to turn up just in the nick of time, hopefully. Hopefully. Anyway, let's see if I can target someone that is actually dying quicker than the rest. Oh, there we go. Defiance and its fleet are warping in. Fantastic. Okay, that's exactly what we need. Okay, so now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and use Sublight to get over to them. Because, as you can see, I'm actually taking a bit of a pounding here. I'm not, not really appreciating that at the moment. So let's just move over here with our Sublight and then we'll get to where they are. Where, where is he? There, ah, there's someone. Ah, that's that's a dreadnought right there. And who's that? That's another dreadnought. Okay, so I, I guess I could just stay next to the dreadnoughts and things, but I'd really like to show you how Defiance fires and shoots and things like that, because it is really, really impressive. Where is he? Where is he? Is he? Oh my. I, I don't know whether I can actually find... Is that him? No, that, that is not him. Okay, let me just turn off my automatic firing at the moment. That would not be a good idea to shoot at them, would it? No. Okay, is that is that him? No? No? Okay, apparently I can't find him for some, for, for some reason. I mean, maybe he's... Maybe he's somewhere... Oh, he's probably on the left side over there. He's probably all by himself because he's so massive. Yeah, that's him over there. Yeah, as you can see, he's level 50. And, well, well I, I don't even know. I don't even know what his stats are like, but... Well, 
the stats of these ships. I have seen the stats and they are, well, very impressive. Very, very impressive. Okay, so I'm going to continue automatic firing here. And yes, my starboard shield is now getting a little bit crumpled. I don't particularly appreciate that. Anyway, let's see if we can just eliminate these guys as fast as we can. Obviously, with the help of Defiance, it is massively much, much easier than it was beforehand. But most of my fleet has been destroyed, which I am very sad about, actually. Now, although we are playing more of a close quarters combat style ship, sometimes it pays you to kind of stay a little bit back just so that you can fire from long distances because as you can see right here, I'm taking literally no damage, maybe a little bit of damage here and there from some stray fire. But for the most part, it might be easier in these cases because many of the battles are much, much more difficult in this DLC that you stay a little bit more out of the reach of your opponent because even though I can't use my abilities at the moment unless you are of course a sharpshooter I suppose if you are a sharpshooter then that would make you know a great deal of sense to stay back but the point is it does pay you to stay a little bit further away especially when you're using weapons like I am that are much more to do about staying further back like the rail guns and the plasma cannons and things like that obviously beam weapons I think are the I think they are, aren't they, aren't they the shortest range? I think they might be the shortest range, but anyway, the point is is that staying back and just using each energy battery efficiently, that is usually the greatest way to make an impact in a fight. Now, obviously, you need to make the greatest impact you can in these kinds of fights because everything is blowing up around you and there are extremely strong ships everywhere and you do need to be a little bit careful about those kinds of things. So I'm going to try and get away from this guy and then I'm going to try and swivel, swivel, there we go, swivel my ship around so that it can then fire with its other energy batteries. Now I've not touched on this beforehand but basically you need to try and keep the maximum energy that you can on either side firing because if you don't have that energy to fire then obviously you're not going to be doing any damage. So yeah I didn't actually realize that beforehand. I kind of did, but I wasn't actively making any sort of, I don't know, any actions to prevent myself from running low on energy and then having a great deal of problems. So, yes. Anyway, I'm going to use my... Ah, execute. Yes, executed. Oh no, I'm running into asteroids and all kinds of things. Well, yes. Let's finish up, finish up this battle and then we'll see where we go after that. And that's exactly the reason why you don't want to get close to one of these titans. As you can see here, this fellow decided that it would be a good idea to get right underneath our friend the titan. And, well, you can see where it's led him. Oh, yes. To the demise of doom, death, and destruction. Yeah, well, there we go. Good job, Warden. The enemy is organized really well. They put blockades to stop us from assisting. Our prowess proved superior, and we made it on time. But their territory is riddled with thick forces preventing any movement. Tread with great care on your conquest. Oh dear. It was just a few carriers. Well, it might be a challenge for our friend here. He has no defiance of his own. Sir, sorry to interrupt, but our support ships are warping in, and they have already started the work on the outpost. Great. Warden, I have high expectations of you. You may proceed with the conquest of this region. Laurel will track your progress. In combat, we will help as required, and we will constantly provide support for the upgraded forward pout posts. Yes, pout posts, because they're going to pout at us all the time. Anyway, they will be required to wage war between the two zones before you weaken them enough to take over the next one. You might decide to rush head on, but I highly encourage you to follow proper war leading protocols or we might end up with severe losses. And what would be the proper war protocols? How are they different? any, any different this time? This kind of forward outpost provides better, better tactical environments. Both sides have a lot of power and it is up to the battles in the middle ground to decide which faction has the upper hand. Push them hard enough in these battles to weaken the opposition and finally take over their temporary base. Wage war in the middle ground to weaken forces, and then push the forward outpost. If you have any questions, visit me at my camp. Good luck, Commander. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so there you go. That is the first sort of little bit of introductory gameplay that we're going to see here from the new Titans DLC. And as you can see, they have now just started work on the space station. I'm going to turn off autofire so that I don't actually kill them. And the construction progress is, well, 
in progress. Yes, 25% and counting. Now, otherwise, our current objective is to conquer the CWA occupied zones. We can wait for the assault fleets and we can re re well, we can reduce enemy garrison power by destroying their assault fleets. So if we want to, I can go over there and destroy their assault fleet, which is actually what I'm going to do, but instead, I'm probably going to just load my advanced save. Alright, so I have already defeated a couple of their assault fleets, and we now have the opportunity to find an old acquaintance of Zaldo himself, and he is known as the Rat Man. He was actually known as something else prior to that, but he's gone a little bit crazy. And, oh yeah, you can also see that I have selected a different ship type in this save, so it gives us a bit of an opportunity to see more of the Dreadnought class. Anyway, so we are here, but we are detecting faint radiation signatures. When you are ready, we should proceed. There he is! There's the Rat Man. There he is, right there. Okay, so what's... <laughs> I've been awaiting thee. Oh, where did he go? Ratman, we are here on behalf of the Emperor Zaldur. Show, show yourself, yes, shower yourself as well. Anyway, we have urgent business to discuss. On behalf? Aha, <laughs> right. Sir, the radiation levels are rising. How you like them accommodations? How do you like our Gemini? Feeling safe? Sir, the radiation levels are off the charts, but we, we are okay here. Okay, safe? Wrong. Nobody is safe in Gemini. Not now, not tomorrow, not yesterday. Follow me if you have what it takes for the truth. Comms are down, but we are detecting a slight signal in the vicinity. There is also a problem with the radiation, but it is seemingly negated by the nearby structure. It seems we are accumulating some kind of an energy barrier as time passes by, so we should charge it up before we start moving in the waypoint direction. Alright, so we have to go close to these little these little energy barrier producing things and then we have to make our way on to the waypoint. I felt this would be quite interesting because this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I'm not entirely sure if the remaining little bit of the campaign that I did not participate in does have something like this, but I don't think so. I think there's many more gameplay elements to consider here. Anyway, we're going to go to the waypoint. And you know what would make sense for me? I'd love to be able to bring that with me, but unfortunately there's going to be a very, very close timing to do here. So let's hope that we actually get there in time. Obviously 15 seconds is not really a lot of time to get to where we need to be, but as you can see we're, we're barreling towards it. 20,000 and counting, 15,000, 10,000. I think I should be able to make it there just in time. Yeah, there we go. Phew. For a second. Oh, wow. Okay, that was really close. That was really close. I literally thought I was about to die there for a second. I had three seconds remaining. Okay, so there you go. Now we can stay close to this one, and then we can get ready to go to the next one. Okay, it's just over there. All right. So, yeah, if we just take a quick look at the map as well, this is what has happened. So, as you can see, I took an additional zone so I fought someone around in this zone and I, f I was gonna fight someone in this zone but then we had to go all the way down here as far as I'm aware and that has then made things a little bit more complicated so yeah anyway we have another 10 seconds destroy the hostile ships yeah well I'd love to be able to but I really do need to get close to this radiation barrier please Ooh, that was really close that was really really what what where did they where did they go Am I dead? Oh no. Alright, so we are almost there. I, well, basically what happened was I did not catch up to the ships in time and, well, kind of failed. So yeah, I had to reload. But that's fine because we got back here in literally two minutes. Now we've been fighting these four hostile ships. As you can see, I'm almost dead. I am literally almost dead in a dreadnought ship. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's very crazy. Anyway, we are almost done with completing this stage. As you can see, the countdown is almost at zero, but as you can see, there's actually a little generator thing very, very close by, so I can just go over here and then I can prevent the radiation from dealing significant damage. What I would love to get right now is a little bit of a space station to repair myself, but don't think I'm going to get anything like that, so I'm going to have to use some equipment. Stop toying with us. We are here to ask for help. You are the one who brought Zelda back, so stop this nonsense and come with us. We could use each other. 
Yes, yes, who'd like that? Commander, do you know? Do you know how it is to be betrayed? Betrayed by the Dominion when I was in utmost need? Betrayed by them? After I have fully cooperated, betrayed by the whole of Gemini. But now I know better. Now I see all for what it really is. Beware of the eye, Commander. Beware of them, for they are vigilantly watching. At acting from the shadows. Yes, not catching. Plotting and twisting our ways and murdering loved ones. What in the world are you talking about? The end is nearing, Commander. There is no other way. You will do. Don't worry about the radiation for now. Come meet me when you are ready. Radiation levels are minimal, and we've re we have received a new set of coordinates. Aha! Alright, so there you go. So, he obviously was the one causing some problems there. Tara has leveled up, which is fantastic. We've also leveled up. Two million credits for that is just insane. That's really nice. And, uh, yeah, so, I'm, pr I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Now, hopefully... I, I mean, I'm going to use some repair drones, but hopefully he's going to help us or repair us or something like that, because... I'm not a big fan of going into another battle with half HP, basically. So, yeah, let's let's just hope that we can come to some sort of arrangement with him. Oh, what do we have here? That looks like a that looks like a very large ship to me, but I've never seen that before. Oh, no, that is another Titan. Yes, that is another Titan. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. We do actually get to see a couple more different variants of it, because obviously we have only seen so far the Defiance class. I admire my creation, Captain. <laughs> I am admiring it, actually. Yes, magnificent. What is it? How is it possible? Ah, Warden, there are secrets and technologies all around Gemini that you're just oblivious to. Behold the great juggernaut, a prime example of proper scrapping and procuring. My home base and central operations. There is a reason you haven't heard of me, and it is because all I've done for the past 30 years is work on this magnificent beast. Sir, the radiation levels are rising again. And now, Commander, you know what comes next. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? Three, two... Oh no. Battle stations. One! Commander, the juggernaut is all yours. Just leave with it. Alive! <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. He's actually giving us a titan. Is that crazy? Yes, I think it is. But he is a crazy guy, but I won't be saying no. Uh, sir, he cut the communications. Inbound ships are on the way to attack, but their target is the juggernaut. Okay, so we have to stay close. Be careful of the radiation. Okay, so we have to stay close to this and we have to be careful. Oh no, I'm at half HP still. This is not good. Okay, I'm going to use this when we're off cooldown, obviously. But Okay, can you please start firing? There we go, there we go. The firing arc of this ship is a little bit different to the one we saw previously in the video. So, yes, going to need to get used to it once more. Okay, so hopefully I can defend this. I mean, it is a Titan, so technically I should have no problems whatsoever with... You know, defending it and making sure that it lives because it is an absolute monster. Anyway, I'm going to try and get close to this dreadnought over here. And also we do need to be a little bit careful about the radiation. There is a radiation shield booster, however, so I'm probably going to sublight all the way over there. As the juggernaut is very, very close by to it. Is it going to just move all the time or something like that? It's probably going to move all the time and we're going to have to defend it on the run or something along those lines. Okay, so that is another Dreadnought. Oh my. Okay, there's only three of them, so I suppose it's not too big a deal for us to try and defend against them. But, oh, there's just, oh, the Dreadnoughts are very irritating to fight. Oh my. They're just very, very powerful. That's the reason. Anyway, there's actually someone beneath me right here. Who's that? That's another Dreadnought. And that's another one. Okay, so I guess I'm just going to try and focus on one of them. And we're going to see if we can kill them. How is the Juggernaut doing? Uh, not too good. I'm going to try and focus on this guy first. Tolkien! Yes! You brought the elves to Middle-earth! <laughs> ah, yes. And now you will pay! <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening right here. Anyway, let's see if we can... I'm going to try and disable this guy for a little bit, at least. And then we're just going to fire away at this guy and see if we can just take him down, try and focus him. Oh no, there's another one. Ah, oh, there's another one. Okay, well, hopefully... Oh no, the Juggernaut is not... The Juggernaut's not doing well so far, I gotta say. The main problem is this guy shooting into the back of it, because obviously its shields have been destroyed or at least, you know, removed from that particular portion. 
Uh, I really... Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to use some damage amplifiers, I suppose. going to use the damage amplifiers, see if that will make a bit of difference. Okay, there we go. So far, not too bad. I mean, we're, we're getting this up and hopefully dead soon. Okay, come on. Fire away! Yes. Okay, how, how is it going? How is it doing? 81%. Oh, I think we'll be fine. I think we will be fine. Okay, yes. Now I can use my execute. Boom. Take out that guy and now maybe we can... What? What is that? It's a carrier. Okay, kill the carrier next, I suppose. Carriers usually are not the most defensive, but yeah, hilariously enough, they are the most expensive that you can get in the game, so that's pretty nice. Ooh, okay, I am almost dead. I am almost dead. I did not even notice that I was being shot. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, so let's see if I can sublight a little bit away from the fighting here, and maybe use my shields a little bit better, and maybe we can get to the front of the Juggernaut. And hopefully I'll be able to defend from here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. Going to try and swivel around. There we go. That's a little bit That's a little bit easier, I guess. Kind of. Not really. Because now I have to turn around again. Ah. Too fast. Going too fast, too furious. That's what's going on here. Okay. Okay, slight issue. Slight issue. Yes. Okay, there we go. Turn around. There we go. And now we can hopefully fire at this guy. Point blank range. Can you... Yeah, there we go. Okay, we are firing at it. That's good. This is another carrier as well, so I suppose that's fine. But, uh, yeah, I might be dying. I might be dying. So, yeah, just bear in mind that that is... That is just because the fighting in the DLC is much, much more difficult than that of the base game because there are many people that are very good at this game. I'm not one of them, but there are many people like that. Now, I do believe if you were going to complete this mission, then you would gain control of the Juggernaut. And that, in my opinion, is going to have to be left up to those of you that want to try this. And, well... Go ahead and check out the link in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.